Hi, I'm Dr. Kevin Alding, and in this video, I'm going to take you through the intricacies of the UK NT Maths Challenges, from understanding how to achieve a bronze certificate in the Junior Maths Challenge, right up to the process of earning an invitation to compete in the Mathematics Ashes or the International uh, Mathematical Olympiad. You will understand all of that by the end of this video. So whether you're a beginner trying to navigate your first competition, an intermediate uh, math student striving for success in the Olympiads, or a and participant preparing for the highest level of competition. This is a comprehensive guide that will give you some really valuable insights that will fuel your journey through these competitions. So we'll start by looking at what all the different competitions are and then I'll take you through them all one by one. So we'll start with an overview of all the different competitions and who they're for. And remember, all of these competitions are aimed at particular age groups, but enthusiastic and capable younger students are always welcome to attend and to participate in the higher levels of the competition. Very, very often much younger students take the competitions than the age group stated here. I am going to be stating all the age groups in England and Wales uh, age groups, uh, but I will put the actual ages alongside them as well. So for years seven and eight, uh, we've got ages uh, up to around 13 here. We've got the Junior Maths Challenge, which is the UKMT's biggest maths challenge, sat by over 300,000 students every year. And then the follow-on rounds for students that have done well are the Junior Kangaroo and the Junior Olympiad. We'll go into a lot more detail about all of those very shortly. Uh, in years 9 to 11, we've got the Intermediate Maths Challenge, and then it gets a little bit complicated because there are two kangaroos and three Olympiads, depending on the age of the students, uh, the Grey and the Pink Kangaroo and the Cayley, Hamilton and McLaurin Olympiads, and I'll explain all of that again later as well. And in years 12 and 13, we've got the Senior Maths Challenge, and that's followed on by the Senior Kangaroo and the BMO, the British Mathematical Olympiad, round one and two. Uh, and there are some extra competitions like the Mathematics Ashes against Australia and the International Maths Olympiad for those students that really, really are at the very top level. I should say as well, for younger students who aren't quite ready for these competitions, the Mathematical Association also organised the Primary Maths Challenge for ages 9 to 11 and the First Maths Challenges for ages 7 to 9. For those competitions, scores are allowed to set the boundaries themselves uh, for gold, silver and bronze certificates. So we're just going to be focusing on the UKMT competitions here where they are set at a national level. And if you're preparing for any of these challenges, I've made it my mission over the last couple of years to put as much good quality preparation advice out there as possible. You can go over to courses.mathsaurus.com and take a free preparation course for almost all of these challenges now. And I'm adding more and more over time. There are some paid upgrades there as well. And I do offer some classes and uh, live tuition as well, but the free courses about these challenges are really very substantial and will let you practice and prepare for all of these challenges. So let's look at each competition in detail now. We'll start with the Junior Maths Challenge, which is the biggest of all of the maths challenges in terms of the number of students taking it, with over 300,000 taking it each year. Every student who takes part will get some sort of certificate either a certificate of participation or a bronze, silver or gold certificate if they meet the required threshold. The Junior Maths Challenge, like the Intermediate and the Senior Maths Challenge, is a multiple choice paper. There are 25 questions with five options. In questions 1 to 15, they get five marks each. And in questions 16 to 25, they get six marks each. That gives you a maximum possible score of 135. And then the Junior Challenge, since 2020, there have been no penalties for incorrect answers. So students can feel free to guess any questions that they haven't got right. Uh, that used to be uh, different. It used to be that there were penalties and deductions for uh, incorrect answers and they still exist in some of the other challenges but not in the junior challenge. So you can see the various thresholds here starting with the bronze certificate threshold. You could get 10 or 11 questions out of 25 right and get a bronze certificate and be in the top 50% of all students for a silver certificate and the gold certificate a little bit higher. Um, 50% of students get gold, silver and bronze. It's in the ratio of 1 to 2 to 3. So it turns out that about 8%, 17% and 25% of all students meet those boundaries. Bear in mind, by the way, that not all students take these challenges. It's usually only relatively enthusiastic students that want to do the Junior Maths Challenge. So when I say top 50% of all students, they're probably more than in the top 50% nationally. They're in the top 50% of people who have taken this challenge. Students that then do really well can also qualify for the follow-on rounds 
So we start with the Junior Kangaroo, which is only for UK students that had a threshold just above the gold certificate boundary last year. And for the Olympiad, much, much harder to get into. 113 is a really high score. These boundaries do change from year to year, by the way. These are just the boundaries that I'm showing you from last year's competitions as a guide. They're usually fairly similar. So about 10,000 students will qualify automatically for the Kangaroo and about 1,200 for the Olympiad. Now, what if you don't qualify automatically, either because you've missed the cutoff for the score or you couldn't take the Junior Maths Challenge on the day for some reason? Well, it is possible to make what's called a discretionary entry into the follow-on round. If you've qualified automatically from the Junior Maths Challenge, you will be entered into the competition for free, either the Kangaroo or the Olympiad. If you want to enter yourself, you have to pay either £4 for the Kangaroo or £25 for the Olympiad. This all has to be done via the UKMT Centre where you're going to be sitting the exam. And these two follow-on rounds do always take place on the same day. So usually students choose to just do one or the other of these competitions, but it is possible to take both of them. And some students do do that every year and you would have to just sit one after the other and uh, you pay the discretionary entry for whichever one you haven't automatically qualified for. So the Junior Kangaroo is in the same format as the Junior Maths Challenge, questions 1 to 15, 5 marks each, questions 16 to 25, 6 marks each, uh, no penalties for incorrect answers, and you either get a certificate of participation if you entered via discretionary entry, a certificate of qualification if you qualified via the Junior Maths Challenge, or a merit if you uh, enter and you get above uh, 90 it was last year, again that varies, and that's the top 25% of students in the kangaroo. But of course students in this uh, competition are already amongst the very top students, so it does get quite hard to get to the merits at this stage. In fact students even taking the Junior Maths Challenge are usually in the top portion of students because not all students take these challenges at all. Scoring for the Junior Olympiad is a little bit more complicated. There are two sections in the Junior Olympiad. There are 10 one mark questions in section A that just have a numerical answer and then six long answer questions in section B which have 10 marks each and where you have to show full working. This is why it's slightly more expensive to enter the Olympiad than the kangaroo as a discretionary entry because there is a much bigger burden of marking the papers. There are two sets of boundaries. Firstly, you can get a merit or a distinction based on your overall score out of 70 in the competition and you can see here the boundaries from last year. There is then also another level really for the very elite students who can get gold, silver and bronze medals in the Olympiad. As you can see here, only 40 students get a gold medal, 60 get a silver and 100 get a bronze. So roughly students in the top 100 in their year group because this is across two year groups. All medalists also receive a book prize, which usually is a physical book that UKMT uh, will send you. But the thing to notice about these medal scores is they only depend on section B scores. So your short answer questions in section A won't count. If you're going for the medals, only section B is going to count for you there. And the scoring for the Junior Olympiad changed in 2022. Previously, it was a bit more complicated and section B answers only counted if they were four or more and the book prizes were slightly different from the medals. It's all been much simplified since then in line with the intermediate competitions now as well. So hopefully that makes it slightly easier to understand. So the intermediate math challenge is quite similar to the junior math challenge, a multiple choice paper with 25 questions. Again, five marks for one to 15, six marks for question 16 to 25 and a maximum score of 135. And the top students will get gold, silver and bronze certificates in the same ratio as for the junior challenge. So the top 50% getting those in the ratio one to two to three, meaning about 8% get gold, 17% get a silver and 25% uh, uh, get bronze and participation certificates are available for students who don't meet those thresholds. In the intermediate challenge, you can lose marks for incorrect answers. So questions 1 to 15, there are no penalties. You may as well guess those ones. 16 to 20, you will lose a mark if you get one wrong. 21 to 25, you'll lose two marks if you get them wrong. So it becomes a lot more of a gamble as to whether or not to guess those. If you leave a question totally blank, you are never deducted anything at all. So uh, it's only if you make an attempt to an answer and it's wrong, a blank answer sheet would score zero for that question. Now this is where it gets a bit complicated because the intermediate math challenge is over three year groups. And of course, many younger students uh, than that taking it as well. But there are different follow on rounds depending on which year group you're in. So anyone in year nine or under will be eligible for the grey kangaroo that's roughly age up to 14 and those older students in years 10 and 11 up to age 16 will go into the pink kangaroo and for the olympiad there are three olympiad rounds so for year nine we've got the kaylee 
for year 10 we've got the Hamilton and for year 11 we've got the McLaurin Olympiads and again you can see the qualification scores that were needed for each of those in last year's challenges again those exact boundaries will change from year to year but it's quite similar overall to the junior challenge we've got about 8,000 students in total taking the kangaroos and we've got about 1,500 students in total taking the Olympiad rounds not quite as many people in each year group take the intermediate competitions compared to the junior ones so it does work out as roughly the same sorts of proportions of students overall notice by the way that some of the boundaries here aren't even gold certificates so actually if you're in year nine the IMC can be very challenging to get a gold certificate and this is reflected in the boundaries to, the, to get to the kangaroo see the kangaroo qualification is usually lower than the gold certificate boundary so getting a silver in year nine is really really very good and that's enough to qualify you for the follow-on round that's because year nine students here are up against students that are potentially two whole year groups older than them and again all of these follow-on rounds will take place on the same day about six to seven weeks after the IMC these are usually going to be taking place in March sometime and again, if you don't qualify automatically, you can make discretionary entries. £4 for the kangaroo and £25 for the Olympiad are the prices at the time of recording this video. Students can, if they want to, take a kangaroo and an Olympiad, but uh, usually they just choose to take one or the other. So the grey and the pink kangaroos uh, work quite similarly to the junior kangaroo. This time there are no penalties for incorrect answers. You can either get a merit if you do really well and you're in the top 25% of students taking it. Last year the boundaries for the grey and the pink kangaroo were actually the same, uh, 84 here, but in other years they will be different from each other because they are different papers. Uh, you can get a certificate of qualification if you qualify automatically because you've done well in the intermediate maths challenge or a certificate of participation if you've entered via a discretionary entry and you don't make the merit. And the Olympiad papers also work similarly to the junior competition. This time, unlike the junior competition, there are no section A questions. There are no short answer questions. There's just the equivalent of section B. So that's six long answer questions where you can show working and the working really is an important part of your answers there. About two thirds of students who enter the Olympiad will get either a distinction or a merit. But of course, it's usually only very exceptional students who have even got to this point in the first place. So 25% will get a distinction, the next 40% are getting a merit. And you can see here, just like with the junior competitions, there are uh, medals and book prizes available for the very very top students only 20 in each year group will get a gold medal 30 students will get a silver and 50 will get a bronze medal and they will also each receive a book prize from UKMT going on to the senior challenge then you can see the rules here are slightly different uh, there are 25 questions now each worth four marks and you start with 25 marks but lose a mark for any incorrect answers so that actually gives you a maximum possible score of 125 and a minimum possible score of zero but to get zero you would actually actively have to get every single question wrong so arguably that's almost as hard as uh, getting full marks to guarantee that you would uh, get zero and if you left your paper completely blank you would get 25 marks but every single question has the same scoring system there so you can lose marks even in the early questions as well as the later ones there is actually a higher proportion of students who get certificates in the senior maths challenge compared to the other competitions about two-thirds of students will get a gold silver or bronze certificate and that reflects the fact that most of the students taking this challenge will be a-level math students so they will be generally of a higher standard entering the competition and it's a bit fairer that more students uh, get certificates in that case. Not Nowhere near as many people take the senior maths challenge compared to the junior ones. So. Gold, silver and bronze still in the ratio 1 to 2 to 3 so that means that about 11% get gold, 22% get silver and about 33% get bronze. And again the very top students can qualify either for the senior kangaroo if they are based in the UK. Last year that was set at the same boundary as the gold certificate but it just depends how many students uh, there are sometimes that kangaroo boundary will be a bit higher you can qualify for the olympiad bmo round one if you're in the top thousand or so students again with the senior maths challenge it's possible just to pay for a discretionary entry for the kangaroo and the olympiad if you want to take it if you can't make the senior maths challenge date for some reason or you want to take it because you're quite close to the boundary or you just want to have a go anyway again at the moment it's four pounds for the kangaroo and 40 pounds for bmo round one it's a bit more expensive there is a bigger burden of marking these more challenging papers before we move on to those full round rounds i just wanted to also mention the mathematical olympiad for girls this is a competition that has been designed to address the underrepresentation of female students in maths and in the imo in particular and it gives girls in years 11 to 13 although again younger students are very welcome to participate if they want to to have a go at some olympiad style problems that are slightly less challenging than those uh, for the BMO and to get a warm up for that. This paper has five questions worth 10 marks each. The questions are split into sections rather than just being one long question and you can see the boundaries here for merit distinction 
uh, and so on here. And the nice thing about this competition is it's an alternative route to qualify for BMO round one. So you can qualify directly from the Mathematical Olympiad for girls into BMO one. Of course, you can also make a discretionary entry or qualify via the SMC as well. And there are book prizes available for the top students. So looking at the senior follow on rounds, we've got the senior kangaroo here, 20 questions with five marks each. Again, the top 25% of students get a merit here. You can see the boundary for the merit is quite a low score here. So these are very, very challenging questions. And you can get a certificate of participation as a discretionary entrant or a certificate of qualification if you qualified from the senior maths challenge. Right, so we're getting into some very, very challenging maths competitions here. Now BMO round one, usually in November, three and a half hour paper with six long answer questions, again with 10 marks each. I've got last year's boundaries on the page. I haven't split up the gold, silver and bronze medal boundaries, but it works very similar to the other competitions. Uh, you can get a distinction if you're in the top 25%, a merit in the next 41%, so about two thirds of people entering getting something here. Notice the score for a merit looks quite low, but if you look at the questions, they're very, very tough. So it's a very good achievement if you can get anything out on this paper at all. And again, those medals and book prizes just going to the top 100 students uh, nationally that are taking this competition. The EMO round one actually has another purpose as well as just being a really interesting maths challenge for students of this age group. It's to start to feed into choosing people for the national maths team to compete in the International Maths Olympiad. So there is a further qualification from BMO round one to BMO round two, and the top 100 students roughly will be automatically given entry to BMO round two. Discretionary entries again can be made at a cost here, and the score at which you need to automatically qualify will depend on what year group and what age you are. So I've put last year's boundaries here again on the screen. Again, they vary a bit from year to year. So then BMO round two happens in January, four long answer questions, 10 marks each, three and a half hours to do those four questions, really, really tough questions. The boundaries for a merit and a distinction last year, only six and 18 out of 40 there. So again, you can see very, very tough problems will be involved here, given that these are already the top 100 students in the country taking this paper. Out of the BMO round two entrants, about 24 students will be chosen who could be those students who are going to be representing the UK at the International Mathematical Olympiad. They're invited to an Easter training camp in Cambridge. During that training camp, they do even more uh, maths papers, two four and a half hour papers and loads of other activities and other maths problems in between. And based on those papers and their overall performance, about eight or nine students are selected for a much more intensive year round training, and they can then compete in the International Mathematics Olympiad. There's even other events like a pre-IMO Ashes mathematics competition between the UK and Australia that usually happens. So at that point, we've really got to a very elite level of mathematics. So I hope this has been useful to you. We've taken a really deep dive here into this landscape of UK maths competitions, right from the junior maths challenge up to the senior Olympiad competitions. There really are a great uh, platform for young mathematicians to enrich and to extend their knowledge of mathematics and to really enjoy and learn to love problem solving. And we've looked a lot at the awards and recognition you can get from taking this competition, but don't forget the real value is that intrinsic value of learning to be a better problem solver and enjoying the maths. That's why I've made these free preparation courses for anyone who wants to try to get better at these maths challenges, who wants to do some practice for a competition coming up, or who just wants to enjoy a bit of problem solving maths. Many parents and teachers tell me they take these courses alongside their students and do it just for the fun of these really interesting maths problems. So thank you for joining me on this tour of the UK maths competitions. No matter where you are on your mathematical journey, do remember to just embrace those challenges, enjoy the process and to keep learning. I really wish you the best of luck in any competitions or challenges that you've got coming up. And I really hope I'll see you in one of my free preparation courses soon.